while science calls for caution on nuclear energy, louder voices say stop all mining of fossil fuels now. The counter-argument warns of dire consequences to whales and weekends if we introduce renewables. How can we overcome the entrenched positions in the energy debate and work out the best way forward? It's a great question. At the, at the heart of really of, the, of your question, I think, is the nuclear issue. Mm. Dr Foley, should we be looking at nuclear in Australia as we're having this debate about renewables? Well, at the moment, uh, nuclear isn't an option for Australia because legally it's not um, not something that's possible. OK, so if that was to change, is it economic, is it a good idea? Well, if you look at the, um, the reports that have been done, it's an expensive technology and it's one where it would take some time to build up the capability to do that in Australia. It is a technology that's used in some countries and it's one where, um, where it, it is able to provide uh, energy where we don't, you know, they don't have wind and they don't have um, solar. Uh, energy. So, uh, so that makes sense. But for Australia, we've got the potential to have renewables based on, um, on solar panels and wind and batteries. And that's a pathway that the government's been um, putting forward and is on uh, you know, a plan to get there by uh, getting to zero emissions at the uh, 2050. So. Well, the opposition is saying, as you know, that we should remove the restriction and let nuclear compete. Do you think we should? <coughs> Well, you know, as chief scientist, it's not for me to actually say what the government should do. What we should be doing is looking at uh, the evidence and the information that, that is available and make sure that we make good decisions based on all the different things we have to take into and account. And is it your sense that nuclear shouldn't be on the table? I don't think we should be making that decision without actually getting the information that's needed to be able to Do you think we need more or is there enough? So at the moment the plan is to be able to get to zero emissions using renewables and, uh, and batteries and so Australia's got a fantastic situation where we have so much, uh, so much uh, energy from wind and, and solar that we should be making the most of that. Brian, how do you, I mean and this is very much a domestic debate, I know other countries have, have nuclear energy but no doubt you know we're having this debate in our own, own country. Do you think it's an option we should be looking at? Look, you know, if you're talking abstractly about nuclear power, I think it's a wonderful energy source. If you're talking about the practicalities of the time scale and the cost, we are. those are details that I, it's above my pay grade and I'll defer to the chief scientist. <laughs> you know, but you know, if we talk about mid-century, I think mid-century and beyond, I think there's a good chance that we have fusion as opposed to fission. And once that's on the table, everything changes. No. That will be the approach that will take over, say, from 2050, 2060 onward. How does it change? How does it cha Describe to people who, are, who don't know what you're talking about, what you're talking about. Well, well when you talk <laughs> about <laughs> nuclear power as of today, I presume you're talking about fission, fission. Yeah. where you're taking large atoms, basically, you're splitting them yep. apart, and sort of like snapping of rubber bands, when these large atoms split, energy is released. We all know that the downside of this is you have radioactive waste, you've got meltdown problems. I mean, there's some real issues that are quite dangerous. Fusion is what powers the sun. You take light atoms like helium and you meld them together. And in that melding process, energy is released. And that energy doesn't yield any radioactive waste as the product. It's much more difficult to undertake fusion, but there is now tremendous progress and I think many people in the field really do think it's realistic to imagine that by 2050, 2060, this may be a technology that we harness. Imagine having little suns all over the planet that are used to create clean sources of energy from the most ubiquitous atoms around. You know, hydrogen. I mean, God, how wonderful would that be? You've sold it to me. Uh, <laughs> Gus, I mean, we are um, obviously in this AUKUS agreement on nuclear submarines. Mm. We've agreed to that. Uh, just talk me through the practicalities of that, though, because there are some difficulties in yeah. getting there. Look, I, 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 there's, a, there's this issue of social licence, right? We, the, the, the people of, of Australia, have got to agree to a particular technology, and up until now... New, nuclear technology has been something that has been excluded, including specific direction to the military not to make recommendations to government about nuclear-capable submarines. Now, that changed, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm told one of the fundamental changes is a, is a change in technology where this nuclear reactor is smaller, it's enclosed, and it stays enclosed for the life of its service. Um, that, that appears to have made politicians more comfortable that we'll be able to operate these things. Now, I think there's a moral dimension. 
whether we like it or not, there's still waste produced by that sealed device. And I think part of the agreement with the United States is we will take mm. our share of waste back. We're going to have to we're going to have to create that social license with a community somewhere in Australia to put that waste. And by the way, we have tons of waste, you know, sitting in temporary storage around now because we can't get kind of past this um, this issue. So it looks like we're going to have a, a nuclear powered submarine. Um, there's probably another view that if we hold our breath a little bit, um, that that may not eventuate. Um, but but let's say it does. We've got one will probably be based, or some will probably be based in Perth. And the others we're hearing will be down here at Port Kembla, quite close to Sydney. And so there's a community down there that have got to get their head around the fact that there's going to be this, uh, you know, this and, very complex And system. given they've got to get their head around that, can you see them, like, if we haven't even got there yet, can you see people getting their head around nuclear? Well, it comes to leadership. From, from my perspective, we, we've got to explain to people the value proposition. Um, I personally believe submarines are a very important part of deterring aggression toward Australia. Nuclear submarines are very capable. They can stay submerged for three months mm. at a time, which makes them, you know, quite a, a, an important capability. Again, there's arguments that there are technologies that will be in space within 50 years that will be able to detect large steel objects through the, through the water. So well, these are all the sort of things that when we're making defence policy, we have to think ahead. But, but it's now up to our leaders to make the convincing case to the people of Australia that, A, we need them, we're going to be good stewards of them, and we will take our share of the full cycle. I don't think all of that's been done OK, yet. just quickly before we get to our next mm. question, I heard a little bit of apprehension about what, whether you think AUKUS and those submarines will arrive here? Are you a bit worried about it? We've got news uh, just this week that uh, the, the, the American uh, budget process is unable to sustain the, 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 the building of their own yep. submarines. So They've we, slashed in half their own production. Yeah, so I think we need to, the Americans need to be building something like 2.3 a year to fit ours into the production run. They're budgeted for one per year. So th there are clearly some roadblocks. Now, th there are great people working on this. By the way, a very significant sovereign wealth transfer of money is about to take place. I think we're putting $6 billion into that production system imminently in, you know, in this next budget cycle. So we're paying into that system to, to boost the production capability. Um, so this is, we're on this enterprise. It started. Um, I'm not yet fully convinced we've had the national debate or the discussion to, to get everybody pulling in the same direction. Okay.